I've always been a skeptic when it comes to ghosts and the paranormal. At most, I would entertain the idea as fun storytelling or a way to pass the time on a stormy night. But what happened to me during my stay at a charming but slightly decrepit Victorian hotel in London changed my perspective forever. I was on a business trip in London. I would be staying in London for just one night, so was not looking for the most expensive hotel. I was just looking for a simple bed and breakfast at a good price. After looking for about an hour, I came across a cheap bed and breakfast. It was average in size and looked very old, with a lot of charm, but most importantly, it was cheap, so I went ahead and booked a room. I arrived in London quite late and it was dark by the time I got to the hotel. The woman at the front desk was polite if not a little distracted. She handed me an old fashioned brass key and gave me directions to room 285. The moment I entered the room I was struck by how dated it was. The wallpaper a faded floral design, peeled slightly at the edges, the air carried a faint musty scent. The creaky floorboards groaned under my every step, yet the bed looked inviting, and exhaustion left me unconcerned about the room's quirks. The bathroom was quaint but functional. While I was brushing my teeth, I heard the faint sound of running water. I turned to see the sink's tap gushing water. Confused, I twisted the knobs tightly and shrugged it off as a plumbing issue. It's an old house, I thought to myself. But not ten minutes later, I was reading in bed, I heard it again. The unmistakable sound of water running. This time it was louder, almost aggressive. Annoyed, I marched back to the bathroom. The tap was on full blast, my irritation turned into unease. I tried to sleep, but a strange tension settled over the room. Around midnight, just as I was drifting off, I heard it, a knock. It was faint at first, like someone tapping lightly on the wall beside me. I froze, holding my breath. Then it came again, louder. It wasn't rhythmic, nor did it seem accidental. It was deliberate. Hello? I called out, feeling ridiculous. Is someone there? Silence. The kind of silence that presses against your ears and makes your heartbeat sound deafening. I tried to convince myself it was coming from the other room, but the knock came again, this time from the wall near the foot of my bed. My pulse quickened. I flicked on the bedside lamp and scanned the room, finding nothing out of place. I sat for about an hour, the lamp on, listening. Eventually, I must have fallen asleep because I woke to the sound of something shuffling near the window. My eyes shot open and there in the dim light of early dawn I saw her. A woman stood there in the corner of the room. She was dressed in what looked like a Victorian black dress. She had long black hair and a pale face. She stood there just staring at me. I couldn't move, I couldn't scream. It felt like my entire body had turned to stone. She took a step towards me, her lips parting as if she was going to speak, but no sound came out. Instead, the room grew colder, the air thick with the scent of roses and decay. Her expression wasn't angry, but it wasn't kind either. It was sorrowful, like she had carried a weight too heavy to bear. Finally, I managed to whisper, What do you want? She paused, tilted her head, and then simply faded. One moment she was there, the next she was gone leaving behind only the lingering chill and the faint scent of roses. I didn't sleep again that night. As soon as the sun fully rose, I packed my things and I left the room. At the front desk, the woman looked up and immediately asked, Room 285, right? I nodded, my hands trembling. You're not the first, she said quietly, avoiding my gaze. There's been reports, always the same room. We think it might be Mrs Lockwood. She was the original owner of the inn. She lost her husband and daughter in a fire. They said she never left. 
I didn't ask for more details. I didn't want them. To this day, I can't explain what I saw, but I never stepped foot in another old hotel again. Some things are best left alone. It started out as a joke, one of those I dare you challenges that turned into something bigger than any of us expected. The old farmhouse on the edge of town had always been the stuff of local legend. People whispered about its history, a place where someone was murdered or maybe it was abandoned after a fire. Every story was different, but one thing they all had in common, the house was bad news. It was Danny's idea to explore the house. He always had a way of making the ridiculous sound fun. Tommy and I weren't as confident, but neither of us wanted to look like a coward, so there we were, standing outside the farmhouse just as the sun was dipping below the horizon. The house loomed over us, its jagged roof line silhouetted against the dying light. The windows were either boarded up or shattered, and the front door was padlocked. We searched around the house for a way in and came across a small window on the ground. We looked through and could see the cellar. The window was old, so it was not hard to open. We took turns squeezing through the window. Danny went first, then me, then Tommy. The cellar was damp and it smelled terrible, and the light from Danny's flashlight barely cut through the thick darkness. We stepped over broken bottles, rotten wood, and what might have been some old animal bones. The house was bigger than it looked from the outside. The rooms were cold and empty, the floorboards creaking beneath our weight. Every sound echoed unnervingly, making it impossible to tell where the noise was coming from. Danny was saying how awesome the place was, but to be honest, I was terrified. There was something about the house that made me feel really uneasy. I tried to put this down to the fact that we were searching an abandoned house at night, but I just couldn't get that feeling out of my head. Danny was moving his torch from left to right, and that is when we came across the staircase. By the time we reached the top floor, we were all on edge, though none of us wanted to admit it. The upper hallway was long and narrow, lined with doors that were either closed or hanging off their hinges. Danny pushed the door open, revealing an empty room. We all stepped inside. The wallpaper was old and faded, but the patterns were still visible. They were patterns of teddy bears, so we all came to the conclusion that this room belonged to a child. Then, out of nowhere, we heard a scream. It was a woman's scream, and it was very high-pitched. It came from somewhere down the hall, maybe even the room next to us. We all stood there frozen, unable to move, and then we heard it again. This time louder, and it sounded like it was coming from just outside the door. At the same time, we all ran in panic. The problem was, in our panic, we didn't know which way to go. The hallway twisted and turned in ways that didn't seem right. Every door we opened led to another empty room, another dead end. All the while the screaming followed us, echoing through the house, as if it were chasing us. All we could do was follow Danny because he was the only one with the flashlight. We stumbled through the dark, tripping over debris and each other, until finally we found the staircase. We practically threw ourselves down the steps, our breaths coming in ragged gasps. The screaming didn't stop. The cellar door loomed ahead and we sprinted towards it like our lives depended on it. By the time we reached the cellar, the scream had turned into a piercing wail that made my ears ring. Tommy went through the window first, then me, then Danny. The moment we hit the ground outside, the sound stopped. There was no more screaming. We didn't stop running until we were halfway back to town. When we finally caught our breath, none of us said a word. Danny didn't crack a joke and Tommy looked like he was about to cry. We never went back to that farmhouse. 
and we never talked about what we heard. But sometimes, late at night, I hear that scream in my dreams, and every time I do, I wake up wondering if we really made it out of that house, or if a part of us is still trapped in there, running through the darkness searching for a way out.